And here, this is where we relaunch rebranding of Taiwan tour industry, and you are going to see um, our promotional video about Taiwan Touch Your Heart. to 2015 it's called the period of breaking through in creativity and so within this hundred years of the Chinese tourism we finally able to be able to get our own style our own creativities of the tourism industry and also in within this time we're able to break through 10,000 million mark to achieve more sustainable for our tourism system development so in 2010, um, the process for the hotel star rating was implemented at the first time. So remember, we're using the plum flower, and now we finally use the international star rating system. And then this is also uh, the Taiwan tourist shuttle bus was launched. So on that shuttle bus, you're able to uh, take in the connections from the high speed rail or from the Taiwan Railroad to the local uh, tourist locations instead of you drive your own or you need to participate any form of the group tour you can just go on your own and just by taking this tour shuttle bus with the different packaging for example you got a day tour package with a high speed rail in the buses system or the cable car systems or uh, the shuttle hop on and hop off systems that you are able to be able to visit on a lot of different sites uh, with this shuttle bus and then in October, the first Taiwan Cycling Festival is taking place. So this time we start to promote more like a leisure type of the um, uh, the tourism. So 
of course cycling you can slow down the speed you can be able to visit more place spend more money and even later on we still have a king of mountain event to challenge bring more international cycling fans or like um, cycling lovers to be able to participate in this type of festival to be able to use the bicycle to go around Taiwan or to visit a different site and uh, 2001 the new tourism brand Taiwan was launched it's called the heart of Asia and from the Taiwan touch your heart we transforming to the heart of Asia it's not only because we have the heart and it's also because we're in sort of very convenient location for the connecting flight and to a lot of distance it's only four hours five hours to travel in between Taiwan to South Korea to Japan and to mainland China so that's why it's called heart of Asia and also at that time it was the first year the mainland Chinese tourists are allowed to visit Taiwan as independent travelers before 2001 they can only come to came to Taiwan by group or a range group but in 2001 it's a better relationship uh, with the president Ma so the Chinese government allowed the independent traveler to visit Taiwan with a special travel document and then 2012 the tour Taiwan app was launched so the Taiwan tourism calendar was also released so I will explain more about the tour Taiwan app and the tourism calendar uh, in a later slide and then 2013, it was a Taiwan Summer Solstice 235 was launched. It's kind of a festival to promote some of the location down south. It's really hot, and that's where the Tropic of Cancer went through. So that's why it's called the Summer Solstice 235, because it's 23.5 is where the Tropic of Cancer the latitude is. And then 2014, the Asia Cruise Corporations, the ACC was formed and Taiwan's one of the members. And then in the same year, we have a super task force leader we call the Old Bear, has become the tourism ambassador of Taiwan. It's kind of like a icon or like a mascot of our Taiwan tourism. And then in 2015, the smart travel ticket is called the Taiwan Pass, was officially launched. And then the number of visitors to Taiwan exceeded 10 million. So right here in the 2010, when we were uh, when we were branding the Heart of Asia, we actually also create different icons. So we have six different themes to travel Taiwan: Taiwan for two wheels, time to eat, time to shop. Time to marvel. Why marvels? It's about culture. Time for nature and time for love. Uh, the reason why it's called time for love because uh, there's a different culture in Taiwan because Taiwanese people or some Asian country, we will usually when people, couple get married, they will take photos before they get married, and they need locations for their photo showing. So the government try to get some site. Let's prepare for those kind of photo shoot locations and provide a friendly areas for the bride to be and the groom to be to have a place to change the clothes and also like the scenery for them to prepare these kind of photos. So here we're gonna see the transition from Taiwan Touch Your Heart video to Taiwan the Heart of Asia. So after the transition from Taiwan Touch of Heart to Taiwan Touch of Asia and the Taiwan Tourism Bureau 
also filmed a several different promotional video and here's one of the video to introduce the six different theme of our uh, travel theme of Taiwan. And smiling, ready for you embrace. Come live the passion driven life. Surprising heaven for food, colorful seasons. Taiwan leads you to your dreams. Butterflies dance to the island's beauty. Hearts of Asia, can you hear? Feel the heartbeats answer their call. The heart of Taiwan sings with yours. Oh. Taiwan, Formosa, the heart of Asia. The time for Taiwan is now. Oh, yeah. Taiwan, Formosa, the heart of Asia. The time for you is now. And so here you can see, uh, because Taiwan Tourism Bureau launched uh, the app about Taiwan uh, travel. So this is an app, uh, according to the, way, uh, the rating, it wasn't too good because it's not easy to use. It's actually connect to the website, but give you the basic information of the site from the local map in a special event. And then even select the Taiwan tourism event to create the Taiwan tourism calendar. It was provided from the local government and also selected from like more interested to the international travelers and then give you a different month of different locations of special event throughout different season. And right here you see our really cute super force power of the old bear. Um, in Taiwan we call the Oshun. Uh, it's a Formosa bear, which is native bear in Taiwan. Uh, they try to make it a super cute mascot, especially to attract the Japanese visitors. For uh, This is the design of the old bear, and then a local visitor can use this icon for the different promotional items. And it can be a cartoon character, or it can be an actual mascot with photo taking in the different locations, with different costumes even. And then they even appear internationally for a different event. Uh, it's also created as a hot air balloon, so every year we have hot air balloon festival, we'll see the old bear hot air balloon. And then in many other sightseeing locations, you can also see the old bear sculptures to indicate, uh, you know, like this part of the town tourism bureau managed the area. So this is our super cute, super force old bear. And then we also have this Taiwan Pass, will give you promotional discount of different area of Taiwan. Right now, there are six locations of Taiwan Pass. So it's the Kaohsiung, Pingtung, and Penghu. And then we have Ilan Taiwan Pass, Taichung, 
Taitong, Tainan, and then Taipei, New Taipei, and Keelung region, Taiwan Pass. So each Taiwan Pass was managed by the different county or city government and they give you different promotion. But you'll get really nice discount or like nice, really nice tour itinerary from it. And finally, finally, we move to 2016 to 2020. It's called the period of sustainable development. So we try to make more sustainable for our um, inbound businesses and also domestic business because we in, we recognize the importance of the balancing of the visitor numbers and also for like ecosystems and also for our culture systems. In, so in 2016, uh, the new South Bank policy was promoted. Why? You know why? Because the new president was elected at that time. It was an opposite party. It was more like pro Taiwan independent party. President was elected. So we have the first ever female president, but unfortunately they're not pro China. So Chinese government start to cutting uh, the allowance uh, for their tourists to come to Taiwan. So that's why we are looking for the new market and we start to promote our southern part of neighbors. So we have the new South Bank tourist movement. And then after that, uh, 2017, we have our e year of ecotourism because it's kind of a trend for the sustainable t tourism and ecotourism. So we actually wrote a draft of our Tourism 2020 Taiwan Sustainable Tourism Demand Plan. And at the same year, the southbound, um, uh, the number of southbound visitors of the southbound countries exceeded 2 million people visiting Taiwan. And 2018, uh, the new promoting uh, tourism uh, is called the Year of the Bay Tourism, which is a continue from the ecotourism theme, and it is also continue from the sustainable tourism theme to promote our marine tourism. So, for example, like Penghu area, the diving, and then the Green Islands, all these different islands in Taiwan was promoted and in the same year we launched the Michelin Guide for Taipei was published and then also in the same year our visitor numbers surpassed 11 million and then the 2019 continue the same thing of the sustainable tourism and ecotourism we have the year of small town rumble which they want you to visit the smaller town to enjoy this slow life to see a more in-depth of the Taiwan to travel Taiwan and then this year all the Japanese visitors up to Taiwan exceeded 2 million and finally the year of 19 2020 is the year we try to get people more uh, know more about our mountains so we have the year of mountain tourism which incorporate our indigenous people's lives indigenous people culture the mountain tourism culture the hiking we even open up the mountains so a lot of air mountain area no longer block to the public so we encourage more like hiking group or like uh, more like camping group to go to our mountains but unfortunately this is also the year of COVID-19 and so all the travel plans have to on hold uh, we believe we do well, we do well have the brighter future after this pandemic. So on the left hand side of the photo, we can see uh, we try to promote more of the southbound tourism, and then this southbound country in our neighborhood, uh, most of them are like Muslim countries. So we have Indonesians, we have Malaysians, which is more like Muslim friendly. So we try to promote like more Muslim friendly facilities to these countries, and it is also like very important of the cruise. So continue in the 2010 following a special uh, concept for Pan Asia cruise. We have like more cruise line now visiting Taiwan than ever and each year we added more. So this is the Majestic Princess Press conference that can visit Taiwan and we invited them. And then because the boost of the tourist numbers, we have more and more uh, international air Plane, uh, the flight route they're either resume or added more to Taiwan. This is the resume of the uh, Paris Taipei airlines come back to Taipei again. 
and then we also have like information systems that try to get uh, people who have questions they have those like a uh, street side roadside a uh, question station or information stations by the local business owners so in 2018 we actually uh, ranked Taiwan as the fifth best tourist destination in non Islamic uh, in non -Islamic, Islamic organizations and also in the same year uh, we have continuous visitors working 10 million marks for four years in a row and then it breaks uh, 11 million people in 2018 and so you can see the inbound visitors from 2000 to 2019 is a sharp incline for the Chinese tourists then declines after 2016 uh, benchmark 2015 because of the elections and then they stabilized afterwards and then from the other country you can see a really good in increment from the 2010 all the way to 2019 and then the research number shows in 2019 we're actually uh, have a big increase of the South Korean travelers and also the Philippines uh, funny thing is the South Korean traveler is actually from those, a lot of variety shows, the travel shows and then bring more and more South Koreans to Taiwan uh, when they're watching the shows and when they visit Taiwan okay so from here you can see why Taiwan is called the heart of Asia because for the fine time for the major international airports especially like in Asian country it's actually really close for example from Taipei to Tokyo it's only about three hours and to Hong Kong is only like less than an hour, to Singapore is 4.5 hours, uh, to Auckland is about 11 hours, to Sydney is about 11 hours, uh, for further away, to so Cairo is like 8.5 hours, to Moscow is about 9.5 hours, so it's very convenient for people to travel to Asia, to Taiwan, and then from Taiwan you can continue the journey to the different country. So what happened what happened after COVID-19 is uh, right now we're really lucky. Uh, we do not have many domestic cases. So our travel industry is resumed and the, the government tried to promote several policy for the safety travel. So we do need to wash our hands regularly. And then there's an app to tell you where are those big crowd locate. So with this app, we'll be able to track uh, the populations of the travelers and try to avoid those crowded area and we're also asking people to use the, the chopsticks and the spoon uh, for the sharing spoon and sharing chopsticks instead of use their own to prevent the saliva cross you know infection and then also we try to have the social distance within people so indoor will be 1.5 meters and then outdoor will be one meters and how we help this can help we hope this can help our tour industry to uh, maintain the normal in Taiwan and hope in the future we will be able to help the other international travelers when they travel to know how to prevent causing um, this COVID-19 pandemic uh, it's very long PowerPoint presentation and um, hopefully, hopefully it'll give you some insight about the Taiwan progress of the tourist industry and maybe give you some ideas how to promote your own country's tour industry and thank you very much for the listening. <laughs>